Okay, so what you'll want to do, if you haven't done so already, is watch all these videos up to episode 5. Uh, technically you don't have to because he makes all the scripts available on his GitHub. But I highly recommend it because he gives a lot of commentary on how the code works and you'll just get a deeper understanding of the system, which really these, these scripts that make up these episodes act as the core of my um, dynamic pathfinding system. And I won't be giving too much commentary on these scripts, heap and all that sort of thing. Um, so definitely watch these if you haven't done so already. But if you have watched them and you've written the scripts as you went along, I recommend downloading, downloading them anyway. And the reason being that if you run into any problems with the code, it's going to be much easier for me to help you if you have started from exactly the same foundation. So I've just right clicked on this um, source code, GitHub, and I'm going to download all of the files, even though they're not all relevant. I just thought, why not? Move this to another monitor and wait for that to download. Now, drag it onto the desktop and extract files. Okay, let's create a new folder and call it path and build open up pathfinding this one here and drag episode oops, and drag ah oh man drag episode 5 into that now i don't need this anymore but you know i recommend keeping it storing it in a file or something like that okay so we've got that there now open up unity go into open desktop, path and build shoot, click on that, select folder, continue. Double click on the scene and this is what Sebastian Lake made available to us up until episode 5. We're going to change this quite a lot but the core scripts remain relatively unchanged. I had to do some minuscule changing in pathfinding. Um, grid, I changed a method, uh, but that's not an essential change at all. But unit, I changed a lot. So let's just grab this one here, I put it to the other monitor, and we'll create a new project now, again. Okay, new. Let's call it path and build shoot and for the destination yeah we want the destination to be that here yeah, path and build shoot one select folder and it's in 3d yep create Now drag all the scripts across except for unit. Create a new folder, call it scripts, and drag those across. Now the reason why I didn't just include these scripts with the assets I've made available to you in the folder I have is because I don't want to give even the slightest impression that these scripts are my work. The unit script on the other hand is one that I've changed quite a lot. So I feel I don't feel as bad about putting that into a bundle for you guys. So you should also have this folder will be made available to you in the link below. And what that contains. Sorry. And that contains these scripts that I made and these assets. So let's drag those in. Right. Okay, so let's get these guys out of here. Materials 2. Go to Assets. And let's make a Models folder. Like that. And 
drag all of these into that models folder. Okay, so now let's start making this scene. Well, you, you'll see these errors, don't worry about those. That's just because of some differences in the scripts. Okay, so game object. Create a plane. It's at zero, zero, zero. Let's make that scale that to size 20 on the X and 20 on the Z. Uh, create an empty game object. Make sure it's not the child of the plane. F2, call it A star. Create another empty game object. F2, call it Overseer. Drag the man into about the center of the grid. And let's just add a material to that grid, to that uh, ground. Create material, call it grass. Drag it on. And then find the nice greeny color. That's good enough. Okay. Now. Let's select the camera and go to a view that you want. I think this view is good. And then go game object, align with view. Okay, let's rename that plane to ground. And this is something I like to do, just call that sun and set the position to a thousand on the y axis. Okay. Now in the overseer script you need to grab the building placement. Okay, I can't do that yet. Right. What's the issue? Okay. You'll need to go into Sebastian's node script and change this from world position to node world position. I just changed the name of that because I find this a lot easier to understand if I'm trying to debug code. Anything could be world position, or rather world position could be anything, but node world position is a lot easier to, for me to understand. So that should fix that bug. Although no, it's going to pop up in lots of other places as well, so let's just track them down. Okay, everywhere where there's world position, there now has to be node world position, except for there, because that's just a parameter. Okay, I know there's I, I know there's a better way to do this. This is just bad habits, I guess. Okay, that's not accessible. So go into the grid script and make this public. Is that everything? Ah, okay. Right. So I hope you followed that. I went in, just to repeat, just to be sure, I went into the node script and then I made the node world position. I changed the name from world position to node world position. I did that wherever it showed up. Then I went into the grid script and I made this array public. And also in building placement, that was fine. Um, pathfinding, there was a couple of places I had to change world position to node world position. But make sure you don't change the one where world position is a parameter, because that will break things. Just follow the, the error, error messages. Okay. So now in Overseer, drag building placement and also drag unit manager. In A star, drag pathfinding and also drag grid and path request. Okay, on to the man, drag unit and create a capsule collider. Change that the height to two and Y to one. And then make it a trigger. 
Right, right click this and create a canvas. Inside that, create a panel. And then inside that, create a text. Okay, it's huge. So scale that down. I just press F there to zoom into it. Yes, yeah, that's a good size. Okay, the text we also have to change. Oh, it's backwards. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Which way is it? Okay, it's on that side. All right, I don't want it on that side because I'll have an inventory on that side pretty soon. So let's change that to the opposite side. Okay, the text we will change to say house and move it to the center. And the panel F2 we will also call house. Duplicate that and move it over like that. We will call this one tower and the text we will also call tower. Right, and to both of these we need to add a script and it's this script here, build button. It's not a very good name because they're not buttons, they're panels, but whatever. Build button. Okay. That's that one. Now we need to make some tags. So add a tag. A star. Oops, not A and. A star. Save that. Add another tag. Overseer. Okay. Put the A star tag on A star and the Overseer tag on Overseer. We also need to make some layers or two layers. One is going to be called unit, and the other is going to be called unwalkable. Okay, so we want to make the man unwalkable. Oh no, sorry, cancel. We want to make the man unit. Yep. Okay, so we're making some good progress. Now what we need to do is sort our, that should be fine now, sort the buildings out. Oh, right, of course, okay. <laughs> we did not create the grid size, so make that 200 by 200. And node radius is 0.5. Right. Okay. So now that, that error should go now, I hope. Yeah, and he's moving around. And there's no errors. So, so far, so good. Now, what we need to do is sort the buildings out. Let's drag them onto the scene. And by that I mean get them ready to be instantiated. Okay, so click on the house and we have to add the following scripts. You have to add a dynamic obstacle script and we have to add the ground sense script. Now we have to add a rigid body and we have to add a box collider and we have to make this ignore raycast okay so that's all of that one done but no we're not done we have to do something else which I'm a little, little bit embarrassed by as far as solutions go this solution is quite clunky but it just works really well so you know it is what it is okay click on cube and then drag that into the house. Let's disable this oh, canvas, let's disable the ground for a second so we can see what's going on. So now that cube, let's move it to zero, zero, zero. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is press Control-V, that duplicates it, and then pressing, holding Control down, click here, and move that forward one space. 
Now do that again, pressing control, move it forward one space. And is it? Yes, that's it there. Okay, now control D, move it back so it's there. Control D, move it back, hold the control one space. You have to hold control, otherwise this definitely won't work. Okay, now select all of those again, holding shift and selecting all of these. Now take a different view. And this time press Control D and then Control and move it over there like that. Don't move it like that. Make sure it's right next to those ones. Control D, hold Control, snap it over there. One more time. Okay. Now. Oops. Okay. Now Control D and Control and move it. Whoop. Move it over there. Control D. Hold the control, move it over there, and one more time. Right. Now, select all of them. I should have done this before. Select all of them, and remove the collider. You can also remove the mesh renderer and mesh filter if you want. But I just leave it there for, you know, kind of debugging purposes. Okay, now what I want you to do is duplicate the house. and move it into the tower, make it a child of the tower and change the transform to 000, zero, zero so it's right in the center of the house of the tower rather, get all those cubes, select all those cubes and move them into the tower and delete the house Okay, and now we have to go through that same process again, but with the tower. So we're going to put dynamic obstacle into that. We're going to put ground sense into that. We're going to change the layer to ignore raycast. Yes. We're going to add a box collider. We're going to add a rigid body. And I believe that's all. I think they're done. I'll explain why I chose this and what all this means in the next video. For now we just want to get this working. Okay, so now go into, let's create a new folder and call it resources. Eventually we'll be instantiating this from a resources folder, so this is just for future use. And let's drag these into that. So we've got the tower and we've got the house delete those from the scene. Okay, let's turn the ground back on again. Now click Overseer and in Buildings make that size 2 and drag these guys into the in any order you like. Okay, I think that's all we need to do. Oh no, it's not. Okay, go into Scripts and then go into pathfinding and what I need you to do is go and find the method which is simplify path and just go like this comment that out comment that out that and that so I've gone into simplify path and I've just commented out these ones here but I've left this for loop and I've left this line here okay save that then in grid everything's fine, you don't have to worry about grid in fact everything should just be fine now so let's press play and see how that goes yep, we're moving along there uh, okay, I didn't place it on the path, it would help if I did that yeah So that's working. If you've followed what I've done, if you've downloaded Sebastian's scripts, if you followed all the steps in setting up the file, and if you made the changes that I made to the scripts, then you should have this behavior. In the next video what I'll do is I'll do a step-by-step -step guide to the code, my additions to the code, what it means and how it works. Okay guys, thanks for watching.